Welcome to Moments with Mary Ann. I'm so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very empowering show coming right up with special guest, Selena Coloni Williams. And she's here today to share with us ancient shamanic yoga. Selena is here to talk with us about using the ancient secret rites of shamanic yoga to remove fears, blocks, and subconscious beliefs. So Selena has been on the show before. We've been so lucky to have her. She has a degree in psychology with a master's in screenwriting. She has authored several books and documentaries on psychology, deep ecology, shamanism, yoga, philosophy, and anthropology. A direct student of James Hillman, she studied and practiced Buddhist meditation in the forest of Sri Lanka and has studied shamanic tantric yoga. She's the founder and director of the Imaginal Academy Institute in Switzerland. Selena is also the author of the best-selling book, The Mother Mantra, The Ancient Shamanic Yoga of Non-Duality. So let's welcome to the show, Selena Coloni williams Hi, I'm Marianne. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. What a joy it is to have you here and such an honor. My goodness, I love having these conversations with you. And I was so excited that we get to have another one, especially when we're talking about like shamanic yoga. And I think a lot of people here in the U.S. are like, what is that? What is shamanic yoga? Oh, yes. Shamanic yoga is a very ancient, primordial, ancestral, and animistic form of yoga. And um, its main feature is ecstasy and uh, mystical marriage, uh, which is uh, non-duality. Ecstasy is a transcendental state of consciousness, is is an amplified state of consciousness, uh, is an intensified state of awareness, of clarity, of sight. Entering uh, this state uh, in a shamanic yoga tradition is known as um, entering uh, the psychic forest, or as I love to call it, the imaginal forest. And uh, beware, imaginal, not imaginary, because imagination is uh, a psychological enactment of the, of the eye. But imaginal is a place. <laughs> is a dimension, is the no man land, is the earth in between, where all the opposites meet, human and divine, conscious and unconscious, life and death, visible and invisible, and um, is, um, is, the non, is, is non-duality, the two in one, or, or better, the three in one, because the number of non-duality is three. The, the two lovers always giving oneself to the other always create a new manifestation. So there are three elements in non-duality, the two lovers and their creation. And these three elements are distinct, but not separate. And this is the magic formula of non-duality, <laughs> three in one, distinct but not separate. And uh, at the end is the trinity, <laughs> which is the natural condition of everything. Uh, it is the condition in which we can find everything in nature, a tree, an eagle, a wolf, a butterfly, you see? Yeah, I do. And I'm so glad that you took the time to explain that. When we talk about the essence of non-duality and the marriage of three, that's where all consciousness comes from. Is that correct? Yes, yes, is that correct? Yes, because uh, through the encounter of, uh, uh, in Sanskrit, uh, in Sanskrit, we say Purusha and Prakriti, Purusha is the spirit and Prakriti is the nature. Uh, Through this encounter, we have a manifestation, the creation. So this is the three in one. Um, So when we talk about the Trinity, the three in one, that actually is something that um, is within pretty much all 
different esoteric um, traditions and trainings and teachings? Yes, yes, of course. This is an image uh, which is in, uh, in the deep knowledge of all spiritual traditions of the world. And um, in shamanic yoga, this is uh, experienced directly by the, um, uh, by the people who practice uh, yoga, because uh, shamanic yoga is um, a so primordial, is so um, primordial and simple and direct form of yoga that uh, everyone can experience uh, Uh, this state of consciousness, uh, the three in one, which is uh, an aesthetic and also an aesthetic uh, state of consciousness. Beauty <laughs> is the best expression of uh, uh, the Trinity uh, because the beauty is, um, is the expression of love and of the ability to give oneself to the other. Uh, and of the manifestation of the creation that uh, generates from this uh, um, giving. Uh, and this is also the, the sacredness. So yes, we can call it sacredness. And um, it is a dimension uh, that uh, as a society we have lost. <laughs> and we have to, to bring it back, absolutely, because we can't go any further without uh, sacredness. Uh, in a desacralized society, individuals uh, are victims of an endless array of illusionary needs, of a consumerism. <laughs> we have absolutely to bring a sacredness uh, back uh, in our life. Uh, And shamanic yoga gives uh, a great help in that. It's interesting because we are in this time where it seems that there's this huge separation between, you know, have, you know, people who are really going after materialism and, and those who are seeking their spiritual, um, their spiritual path. Is it possible to do both? I, I know a lot of times they say you can't serve both masters. Oh, yes, of course, it's possible to do both. People um, who are uh, spiritual can also find a great realization in, um, in life uh, through their job, through, their, through money also. Uh, I think that mystics have to conquer back the power of money in order to put this power in the end of the mother earth. Uh, you see, in a desacralized society, people who have uh, power uh, don't have uh, knowledge. And people who have knowledge don't have uh, power. Yes, people who have power have a certain knowledge, but it is a technical knowledge, a strategical knowledge. is not a true wisdom. And people who have uh, knowledge are interested only in the seek of the truth. They are not interested in power. And so in a desacralized society, we have a, a huge separation between power and knowledge. And we have absolutely to, uh, to, 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 to fill the gap, to overcome this gap. That means that the people who uh, have uh, the knowledge, people who are uh, through seekers, seekers of the truth, have to, uh, to try to uh, conquer back the power of money in the society in order to give it back to the great mother, to the mother earth. Um, otherwise, <laughs> we will end up to destroy the nature and wildlife <laughs> completely. You see, we are in a great danger nowadays. <laughs> But in order to help nature, we have to change the two 
of tools, which is the thinking method. We can't help nature using the same tools by which we have destroyed it. We have absolutely to change our thinking method. And this means uh, going back to the sacredness or bring this or bring sacredness back in our lives. Being mystic, remember our ability to feel the spiritual joy, the spiritual happiness within our heart, and uh, reconnect ourselves with the <laughs> with the beginning of all things, which is love which is love, but because we, we carry for, from our previous life a certain resistance to love in form of attachments and fears, this is a, a little bit difficult uh, for us at the moment. And this is why the uh, practice of shamanic yoga is very important because shamanic yoga is a powerful tool um, to melt attachments and fears and uh, realize where we are in truth. We are in love. We are in a marvelous place, which is the imaginal forest. We are in non-dual um, state, which is our home. And we have to remember that by melting attachments and fears. And this is what the shamanic yoga is for. Well, when you started researching shamanic yoga, what was that experience like for you? Was it life-changing? Oh, yes, completely, completely. Uh, <laughs> you see, I, I met my shamanic yoga teacher many years ago. I was uh, very, very young, and uh, uh, when I met him, it was a reunion. The first time he saw me, he told me, nice to, um, it's a pleasure to meet you again. And uh, his name was Michael Williams, but he was uh, uh, far from British. Uh, he, he had been adopted by three different families and he had run away from them all within a few years. When I met him, he was living with an eagle. And um, I was um, in Sri Lanka at that time, studying Buddhism and meditation. And the encounter with shamanic yoga was for me a really uh, a great experience because uh, it it allow, allowed me to see everything in a different way and to experience to do experience of uh, joy and uh, gratefulness and forgiveness this experience is called a uh, pacification of uh, memories, or better, pacification of images in a shamanic yoga tradition. And um, is a great experience. It's the first one that uh, people um, encounter on the shamanic yoga path. What pacification of images means? It means... Uh, uh, being able to evoke our memories or the most uh, striking images of our lives and know them as uh, spirits, not simply as memories, but as uh, spirits. And then uh, enter the emotion of the relationship between us and these uh, images, these memories, enter uh, the emotions of this relationship with uh, joy, forgiveness, gratefulness, love, in order to pacificate these spirits. And if you do that, bit by bit, you can. Uh, open your mind because you can melt your fears 
and uh, you can open your inner vision because you can go beyond mental judgment and reach the power of inclusiveness. And when you are there, beyond judgment, beyond mental judgment, in the power of inclusiveness, you can see everything differently. And you can create the best future, the best future you can for yourself and for your planet by using your past emotions and your past images. And this is a really a magic art. It's a shamanic art, the art of pacification of images. Does it take a long time to get to the place where you can really pacify those images so you can move beyond what holds you back? No, it doesn't take time. Um, uh, as soon as you know how to do, you start to do it immediately. And immediately you receive benefits from that. Because, um, you see, we live in a conscious universe. But uh, we have uh, the wrong impression that uh, events are... Uh, uh, <laughs> caused by the mechanical law of cause and effect, which is not the law of karma. The law of karma is an aesthetic, a poetic law of action and reaction. But our mind, uh, our mind um, presents reality to, to us in form of a mechanical um, events caused by the law of uh, cause and effect. But it's not true. Events, as the ancients know, are uh, entities, uh, spirits, uh, or as uh, Socrates uh, said, they are uh, daimones, uh, gods and goddesses. They are not uh, materialistic uh, or mechanical uh, facts. They are spirits. And so if you start to pacify, to pacify your spirits, the events that you have in your uh, background, in your experience, immediately your future starts to change. Um, and uh, people who don't know this art, maybe call it ma magic, <laughs> but it's not magic. Is uh, uh, is uh, is something that comes from a deep uh, wisdom, a deep knowledge, which is uh, a knowledge of the heart, because we we not only have. Uh, uh, a, thought, a thought of the mind. We also have a thought of the heart. And if we can think through the thought of the heart, we can have a, a wider wisdom, a wider knowledge. You see? Yeah, I see how that all comes together. It's interesting when we look at how many transformations can take place with the mother mantra and using shamanic yoga. Cause I think a lot of times people might get hung up with the word, the mother mantra because they don't really understand what that means. But you look at the ancient origins of shamanic yoga and there's so much energetically that can really be done to kind of move people to that next level that they're looking to get to. Yes. Yes. Uh, we call it Mother Mantra because uh, uh, the core of um, shamanic yoga tradition is a mantra. And uh, this mantra uh, requires an initiation uh, and it has the power of uh, reabsorbing or uh, withdrawing um, reality. You see, everything uh, is... Um, a dream, an apparition, a projection. Um, this perfectly matches the Buddhist concept of samsara will, the will of illusions. 
And uh, we have to be able to bring back all our projection to their original nature, which is an uh, image. Uh, everything is an image, everything is a dream, and we have to bring back all the events to their original nature of images. But um, it's not easy to do that because of the conditioning, <laughs> of the conditioning of the world. Uh, and so a mantra, a powerful mantra can help us a lot because it can, uh, um, it can, uh, act at a very deep level, at a vibrational level, in, a, in the deepest level of our body, in the mind of the cells, which is a vibrational consciousness. So the Mother Mantra is a, is a very powerful mantra, but there are also some some other mantras in the Mother Mantra traditions um, that um, don't require uh, a strong initiations. Um, like, for instance, if I can give a mantra now. Oh, please, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Like, for instance, the mantra O Ratun. O Ratun. Uh, uh, which is the, the mantra, which is a mantra um, used in the pacification process because uh, O, the sound O, it's you. The sound Ra is um, the image that you want to uh, pac pacificate. For instance, the image of your uh, mother, the image of your father, uh, the image of your childhood, for instance. And um, or, 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 or the image of, of, a, of one striking event of your life. Uh, so, O, oh, it's you. Ra is um, the image that you want to pacificate, the event that you want to uh, you want pacificate. And uh, Tun is your relationship the most striking emotion of this relationship. When you repeat Ora Tune, you must evoke an event and uh, enter the emotion of your relationship with this event, enter the emotion with, um, with um, gratefulness, forgiveness, and love. And uh, recognize, you must recognize uh, the event as a spirit, as a god or a goddess, um, as your uh, guide spirit, for instance. And, uh, and then you should be willing to create the best future you can for yourself and for your planet through this event through the emotion of your relationship. Oratun is a very powerful mantra for the pacification of images and can be used uh, uh, in any occasions. Simple but powerful. <laughs> yes, it, it really is. And it's interesting when people make this conscious choice to, it's not really even reframe, but to change the energy of these events that have held them back. That's where all the, the really the magic starts to happen. Uh, yes, because um, usually people uh, put the events, um, which are entities, spirits, in the cage of a mental judgment. And so the events, which are spirit, become uh, angry for that <laughs> and uh, this is why we have to pacificate the events otherwise uh, <laughs> we have a lot of spirits 
angry spirit, angry ghosts that follow us. <laughs> and we can't, absolutely, we can't live in peace. Well, it seems a lot of this anger is um, the past events as well that are coming back in a way to haunt us until we deal with them. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Our past haunts us until we we deal with it. Yes. Mm. So I know that you talk about how our survival instinct plays a part in our evolution of consciousness. And I'd love for you to share a little bit of that for our listeners. Oh, yes. But survival instinct is a, a means, a, a tool of sacredness. Because sacredness is the ability to give one to the other in order to create, to manifest a new creation. And um, giving must be uh, conscious, aware. And uh, so the instinct of survival help, help us to, to give ourselves consciously. But um, it has not to be accompanied by the fear of death. We must realize that um, as long as we don't know how to die and be born again, we will remain unhappy wanderers on a dark earth. So we have to learn how to die and then be born again in order to overcome the fear of death. Life and death are simultaneously, simultaneous, uh, but the chittamaya, as the Buddhists say, uh, the deceit of our consciousness make us... Uh, see the life and death separate, distinct and separate. They are distinct, but they are not separate. And uh, so we have to understand the uh, instinct of survival, which is in nature, as a, an ability uh, to, um, as a component, as a form of sacredness through which nature can give, can offer itself um, in, a, in a deep way, in a worth way, in a precious, in a precious way. But we have absolutely to overcome the fear of death because this is our biggest limitation. And the only way to do that is to undergo, undertake a rite of passage. And uh, a rite of passage in, uh, in shamanic tradition is um, uh, a rite in which we can die and uh, be born again cross the great threshold. The great threshold can, can be crossed in two directions, from life to death and from life to the time before birth. And I think that everyone should do that in both directions in order to remember who they are and um, remember their talents, their abilities, their powers, and their uh, unity with, uh, with the spirit. You see, it's a big journey. It's a shamanic journey. 
Well, on that note, we're going to pause here for a quick break. We've been speaking with Selena Coloni Williams in regards to the ancient practices of shamanic yoga. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne. We'll be right back after these messages. Internationally recognized and award-winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. There comes a moment when you realize you're somewhere special, when you discover that each beautiful creature that you see has been rescued from a life of absolute horror and brought to this incredibly free place. Here is where their lives were forever changed and where yours will as well. Discover over 500 tigers, bears, and lions at the brand new visitor center at the Wild Animal Sanctuary just outside Denver. For more information, visit wildanimalsanctuary.org. Discover true freedom at the Wild Animal Sanctuary. There are nearly 2 million Americans living with amputation. Many live right here in San Antonio. Becoming an amputee can be scary, frustrating, isolating, but there's no reason to feel alone. The San Antonio Amputee Foundation is here to help support you and guide you toward resources such as home and car modifications and even prosthetic limbs. For more information or to make a donation, visit saamputee.org. We'll help you live a full, active life, one step at a time. San Antonio Amputee Foundation, healing limbs, hearts, and and souls. If not me, then who? This ethos is driving the Travis Manion Foundation to empower veterans and families of fallen heroes to develop character in future generations. In 2007, Marine First Lieutenant Travis Manion was killed in Iraq while saving his wounded teammates. Travis's legacy lives on in the five words he spoke before leaving for his final deployment. If not me, then who? Guided by this mantra, veterans continue their service, developing strong relationships in the community and thrive in their post-military lives. Visit TravisManion.org and ensure the character of our nation's heroes lives on in the next generation. If not me, then who? back to Moments with Marianne. We're here today with special guest, Celine Coloni williams who's sharing with us the ancient practices of shamanic yoga. Now, before we went for break, we were talking about this spiritual journey, the part of our spiritual evolution, and how it always seems that we come to this place where we're reaching a new plateau in our spiritual development and enlightenment. When someone starts working with the mother mantra, do they get that same um, leveling out as well where they'll work on issues and it plateaus and then they're working on another one? Oh, yes. When uh, someone starts to work with Mother Mantra, uh, improve uh, level by level. And um, you see... Mm, <laughs> Dostoevsky said, beauty will save the world. And this is something that um, on the path of shamanic yoga, you can experience uh, um, very, very strongly. Because uh, uh, beauty, beauty is a willingness to love, is poetry. And... uh, Shamanism is a is poetry. is an is a poetic experience of life. Every one of us can do this experience, but we have to discover a power to remember a power within us, and through the practice of the Mother Mantra, this can be done step by step, level by level until the full remembrance, um, which is a really beautiful experience. 
is the experience of uh, uh, ecstasy. Well, when we talk about the experience of ecstasy, is that also a place of inner peace, of belonging? What is that like? Oh, ecstasy is a, an experience beyond mind. You see, when, when you are in ecstasy, all the images of your life are pacified because you are beyond mental judgment and uh, you are in the, in, um, in the inclusiveness. And uh, you are the three in one. And so life and death, visible and invisible, conscious and unconscious, are uh, perfectly um, uh, united, distinct but not separate. And uh, this is the condition of a creation. When you are in ecstasy, you are the co-creator of your reality because you, you are... Um, you are at the beginning of all things uh, where everything take, takes place. And uh, you can create, you can create uh, your reality. Uh, you are no more a victim of events. Uh, you are the co-creator of events within your uh, guide spirit, uh, with the divinity. And um, ecstasy is so, um, is a so natural condition. And um, it's, so, um, it's so simple to get in there. But so difficult because we have a mind um, which is a, a great obstacle to that. We have absolutely to go beyond the, our mind. And for that, we have to melt attachments and fears because our mind works on attachments and fears. And we, when we are beyond the mind, we are not without thinking. We, have, we are in an over mind. We are in a supramental vision. So going beyond mind doesn't mean losing <laughs> the power of thinking, but acquire, reach a wider thinking power, a wider thinking method. You see, mm -hmm. and we have to do that nowadays in order to help nature, because <laughs> we can't help nature using the same tool by which we have destroyed it, the, th the thinking method, the, the, the judgmental thinking method. We have to go beyond this. Yeah, with, without nature, it really disturbs the balance. You know, when we talk about, if I understand this correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, it disturbs the balance if we talk about the, the not just our world environment and, and how we live in it, but also the trilogy itself and how we come to a place of inner peace. Yes, yes. Nature is absolutely a great teacher for us. We have to save it. Uh, we have to save wildlife. And we have to stay in nature as much as possible. Because by staying in nature, we can learn so much only by staying in nature, you see, um, nature is beauty. And um, beauty is uh, sacredness, as I said, is um, the ability to give oneself in order to create over themselves. And um, nature, uh, and beauty also is impermanence, you see, if you think at a flower, a flower is beautiful because it's impermanent. If you think at a flower, a plastic flower, but never end, is not beauty. It is a plastic flower. A vanescence, impermanence, is a component of a, um, beauty. And uh, so... Uh, if you stay in nature, you stay in beauty. And when you are surrounded by beauty, 
you can melt your um, fear of death uh, because you can uh, do the experience of impermanence, of evanescence uh, without a fear. Uh, and so staying in nature, you, uh, you melt your fear, you open your mind, uh, you connect back with sacredness, and this is very important. Nature is a really great teacher for us. Well, it's it's very it, it really teaches us the impermanence of life as well, and to appreciate being in the stages that we are in. Yes, yes, yes. Nature help us to love ourselves and to love our. Um, our world, you see, uh, we when we are in nature, uh, we we are in love, and love is always uh, the the two in one, or better, the three in one. When we are in love, when we are in the condition of love, we can uh, separate our consciousness from from ourselves, and we can see ourselves from outside. And uh, this is the best way to love ourselves, uh, being able to look at ourselves from outside. And uh, nature can, can help us to do that because nature is love and love is always the condition of three in one. If we stay in our sense of I, in our ego, we are only one, but if you can reach nature, we can reach love. We are three in one. And in this condition, we can look at ourselves from outside and love ourselves. And uh, if we love ourselves at the end, we love everything because there are no separation between us and all the other things. You know, it's interesting. You have people that feel like their souls and their bodies recharge when they go to the ocean or they go to the mountains, but it always deals with being in nature to get this spiritual and energetic recharge. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, nature helps us to recharge ourselves and... uh, also, in, in the Mother Mantra tradition, in, is known um, a practice called soul hunting. Um, when we are in nature, um, we can um, take the spirits of beauty with us by repeating a mantra, for instance, the mantra Oratun and uh, asking to the spirits uh, of nature, the spirits of beauty to come with us uh, by repeating the mantra and by praying, come with me, come with me, come with me. And uh, (laughs) it's a beautiful uh, shamanic practice uh, which um, uh, can uh, (laughs) regenerate uh, our uh, batteries, uh, regenerate uh, our soul, our body, and uh, our emotion, uh, the ant, uh, the hunt uh, for the soul in nature is a beautiful shamanic practice. Now, is that something that typically you need um, someone who is a shaman that can walk you through that practice? Is it something that they could pick up the mother mantra and do themselves. It sounds like it's a little bit more in depth than that. Oh, people can do that uh, um, by themselves. For instance, uh, uh, reading my book, they can learn a lot. I I wrote the the book about the mother mantra and shamanic yoga uh, on this purpose to help people to practice shamanic yoga by themselves. Of course, if I can come to a retreat, to a seminar, they can learn much more. They can be initiated 
initiation is a really important tool because nobody can go uh, beyond the mind using the mind. We need another tool to go beyond the mind. And this is uh, uh, initiation. <laughs> so uh, my, my, uh, my advice is uh, start reading the book and practice uh, the, um, the exercises, uh, the spiritual uh, uh, exercises uh, that are on the book. And then when you can do a seminar or a retreat. I offer also webinars through my website, also in English, or you can come to, to a seminar uh, all over the world. I, I give seminar in many places, in, uh, in Europe, in Japan, in, uh, in the US, in, in UK. And uh, you can come to a seminar and, um, and uh, receive an initiation. Well, I know you've got quite a few seminars coming up, and we'll list those, you know, towards the end of this discussion here. And I know we have a little bit more time. You know, when we talk about shamanic yoga, I would love for you to kind of explain a little bit of what that's like. If Does someone have to be... Um, a yogi who's done yoga for years can, you know, if it's someone that has a hard time, you know, being actually physically moving, is this something that they can incorporate? What does this look like for people who pick this, this up and start working with it? There are many aspects. There are, um, for instance, the flowing sequences of shamanic yoga, which are um, yoga postures done in a, um, in a sequence with uh, um, some um, kind of uh, breath control, imitating uh, the animal's uh, movements. And, um, and those are very special <laughs> body exercises. You can find some example of these uh, flowing sequences uh, uh, on my website. And then uh, we have um, a vast array of uh, healing practices that are uh, done uh, using uh, uh, the, the power of the mantra, the mother mantra. And also we have um, so-called uh, uh, spiritual exercises of uh, morning and evening, which are um, exercises and practices uh, to, to meet attachments and fears and to withdraw uh, the projections. And, uh, and then, uh, then uh, we, we, we have a lot of uh, rite of passage, different rite of passage that can be um, learned, uh, can be learned and uh, done uh, and redone and done again and again. And uh, every time you do or you repeat a rite of passage, you can uh, understand uh, uh, more intensely, you can see more intensely through your inner eyes. You can uh, experience uh, more intensely the uh, state of ecstasy. Because you see, everything is a question of intensity. And uh, by um, doing and doing again the, the practice of shamanic yoga, your uh, intensity of experience increases. And, and day by day, you are uh, more happy, uh, more, uh, um, you have a, a bigger, um, a more intense. Uh, Clarity of sight, uh, um, intensity of vision. Uh, at the end, you are more alive because being alive uh, is not a consequence of being born. <laughs> is uh, is something that uh, we must uh, uh, conquer. We must uh, acquire. 
you see, we must gain day by day. You get a lot of people who, you know, say that they are just kind of going through life and going through the motions and they've really lost happiness, hope, feeling a purpose. And to be able to regain just an ounce of that would mean so much. And so this practice, you know, can bring people back into that state where they're starting to feel that inner joy. Oh, yes, absolutely. In 2013, I was asked to become a sort of a herald by um, the Shaman Union, which is uh, an association of uh, Siberian hereditary shamans, uh, uh, which um, who are concerned about nature and uh, aim to, to transform the present, the current human being into a happier and freer and more uh, um, fulfilled creature in order because because if we are happier of course we are uh, more eco-friendly if we have um, anger or depression within us we don't care about nature <laughs> of course <laughs> we have an art life how can we care for about nature, how can we help nature if we have an hard life ourselves? So uh, make people happier is a, a big aim of shamans nowadays. nowadays. Make people happier because if people are happier, they are more peaceful. Uh, more kind with nature and save nature is the, is the biggest goal of uh, shamans nowadays. Because a shaman can't exist without nature. A shaman is a human being which is uh, inseparable from nature. Like uh, a wolf, like an eagle. It's not an animal, it's a human being, but uh, is inseparable from nature, exactly as a, a wolf or an eagle um, or a butterfly. Well, it's interesting, you know, as we look at ourselves and our place in the universe and on this planet, you know, we are not separate from nature either. But we tend to do that quite often. I think it's part of our evolutionary spiritual process is to get into this place, get back to this place of really non-duality. Oh, yes, yes. It is a part of our process, losing non-duality and uh, um, recover it, uh, remember it. This is the process. Uh, when, we, when we come here in this world, we forget. We forget non-duality, we forget love, we forget uh, our home, which is love. And we have to remember it. Life is a path of remembrance. <laughs> we have to remind ourselves of love. We have to remind ourselves of uh, uh, the time of the beginning, the place of the beginning which is the place of love, where everything is distinct, but not separate from divinity. And um, this is what life uh, is meant uh, for. I mean, life is a journey of um, remembrance. Well, and when we look at the ancient traditions of um, you know the ancient shamanic practice and shamanic yoga, and we look at the mother mantra, it is much more than it's much more than a yoga practice. You know, there's more information there on actually moving spiritually to an, another. I don't want to say like a, a position, but another place that we're really desiring to be. Oh yes, of course, shamanic yoga. Uh, is not like uh, um, yoga that uh, we 
people know uh, usually uh, is not uh, only about yoga posture or breath control is a, a very deep spiritual path which can bring us uh, to the origin of um, all things. Uh, it comes from ancient time, it comes from uh, primordial ancestral time before <laughs> we, uh, we lost uh, our um, uh, awareness. And so it uh, brings uh, within itself uh, the, the symbols and the forces, the energies that can awake us to the memory of the beginning. Yeah. Primitive, primitive is not uh, simply something which is close by animal state. Primitive is uh, something which is close to the divinity state. Well, and I so appreciate that you explain that because I think a lot of times when people think of shamanic yoga, they're not quite sure exactly where that's going to lead them. You know, they look at it and go, gosh, is this going to be part of a yoga practice? Is it going to be part of consciousness and, and a deeper dive into non-duality? You know, what is it that we're, we're focusing on? And it's all of it. Yes, yes. Yes, I think that um, people have to know that um, a shaman is uh, basically a psychopomp, a ferryman, <laughs> or a fairy woman. Someone who can cross the great threshold from life uh, to death or from life to the time before birth, and carry others with him or with her. And um, this is um, the most important aspect of shamanism. And um, shamanic yoga is uh, made of that, of this experience. So what are some of the things that people can expect when they dive into, you know, their own shamanic yoga practice? Because I know there's a lot of ancient teachings that go with this. Oh, yes. Uh, there are a lot of ancient teachings. Uh, but um, you see, all the ancient teachings, all the ancient um, um, metaphysical and uh, uh, mystic traditions uh, have um, a same core, a similar aspect. And uh, this is what um, I call the withdrawal of projection, the reabsorption of reality. All the ancient tra spiritual traditions uh, are meant to help people to bring all the events of their life back to their natural origin, which is dreams, projection, apparition. And this is uh, depicted as a mystical marriage in all the spiritual traditions of the world. Think of Hinduism and of the union between Shiva and Shakti, Shiva and Parvati, the divine Shakti. Or think of Buddhism, think of the esoteric Buddha, which is the Buddha depicted in the, in the erotic union of, with this companion. Think of uh, Christianity and uh, think of the union between uh, Sophia and Christ. Sophia is uh, 
wisdom and Christ is love. And uh, wisdom and love have never, never to be separated. Uh, or think at uh, um, esoteric, think of esoteric Islam, Sufism, uh, think of poets like Rumi, uh, who praises the carnal love between uh, the human and the divine. Uh, think of the Song of Songs uh, and the union of uh, Salomon and his bride. In every spiritual traditions of the world, there is the same symbol. And this symbol is the mystical marriage. For alchemists, <laughs> alchemic weddings. And uh, this is the main symbol in, in shamanic yoga tradition. Um, uh, this is what we call the um, shamanic eroticism. Uh, the shamanic eroticism uh, is um, a very high spiritual path of reunion between human and divine through the uh, the most important uh, the most creative energy of life which is uh, the erotic energy uh, and this is uh, a very powerful path that can't be explained further <laughs> here but because require an initiation of course so, Selena, I understand that you have so many great, you know, events coming up. You're coming back out to the U.S. My goodness. I mean, you have opportunities for people really to get involved with you and the work that the Mother Mantra and Ancient Shamanic Yoga right now. Oh, yes. Yes. I'll be uh, next week on the, the um, uh, th- uh, 20, 24th uh, in San Jose. Uh, for the SAND uh, conference, uh, the Science and Non-Duality conference. I will uh, give um, um, a workshop uh, and a speech at the SAND. And then um, I'll be in Seattle uh, to present my book, The Mother Mantra, The Ancient Shamanic Yoga of Non-Duality, at the Seattle bookshop. You can find all the information on my website. And um, and also I will um, I will um, give uh, two seminars, two workshops in Seattle, one at the bookshop and another one in um, in another place. Uh, you can find the address uh, on my on my website. And um, yes, <laughs> all, all the other uh, all the other uh, events. Uh, are uh, on my website uh, until the end of uh, 2020. All the events are list- listed on my website. Well, Selena, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Oh, thank you to you, Marianne, for having me. And thank you for the listeners. Well, thank you. It has been such an honor to spend this time with you and, of course, to talk about ancient shamanic yoga with you. Again, if you'd like to connect with Selene, you can at selenecolonywilliams.com for more information. We're so lucky that she's in the U.S. right now, and you can actually see her at the SANS conference this weekend. So it's taking place in San Jose. That will be followed up with a book signing and special workshop at the East West Bookstore in Seattle on November 1st and November 2nd. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. You're listening to Moments with Marianne. And remember, make every moment count.
In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Mary Ann airs every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmaryann.com for more information.